once the engine went by, you had to count four cars. One, two, three. And as that wheel's coming here, you gotta start rolling to get in so it does. And the scariest part was laying there after you got in and you're listening. You didn't hear anybody scream or anything. And at the end, no, the train went by. We all kind of looked up and raised to see if everybody was okay. Our guest today is Diamond Farnsworth, who's doubled a lot of different people and worked some of the shows that we still love and see today, like How the West Was Won. Diamond, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. So How the West Was Won, I mean, Big Jim Arness and Box Lightner, too. Yes. You worked, Dean Smith, I think, was a coordinator on a lot of those. No, it wasn't Dean Smith, it was, I'll think the guy's name. Big, he doubled Arness on everything. Mm. Arness had him, he he was on the horse, riding the horse for him. He was a bulldogger, mm -hmm. what he was, mm. and he was huge. Not Ben Brady. Ben Ben Bates. Ben Bates, okay, I was close. Yes, yes, okay. yes, <laughs> Ben Bates. Ben Bates, yeah, he doubled him all, uh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, he doubled him too. all the time. Yeah. And he was a stunt coordinator on that show. And that was a, uh, a bigger budget than, than most TV series, How the West Was Won. Well, yeah, because they, they, they shot a lot up in Denham, Utah, yeah. and they flew everybody up there all the time. So, I mean, just to do that, you'd have to have a pretty good yeah. budget. Like a movie. You I mean, know? I, I know the Universal shows, they rarely even left the, the lot. lot. No. You know, if they went to Vasquez Rocks, that was like, right. whoa. whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Money spent, don't do not do it. But so, how the West was won, what was that like then with that crew? Yeah, everybody I worked with, they were very nice. Everybody mm -hmm. was, very seldom do you run into any problems. Anybody, wardrobe, makeup, hair, they're all mm -hmm. a bunch of great mm -hmm. people, you know. They loved their art, and they loved to work, and they loved, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody mm -hmm. loved Arnett. I mean, sure. they loved him. I mean, sure. he was he was like a king, you mm -hmm. know. He'd come to the set, and everybody would just be, in, you know, all about him. Yeah, Box Lightner says he was uh, just the mentor for Bruce. That was Bruce's uh, first big break. How the West was won. Yeah, it probably was. It was. Yeah, he's like out of nowhere. He felt like, and then he learned so much from just watching the way Arnest treated everybody. Yeah, Bruce is a good friend. He's yeah. a good friend. On how the West was won, were there many dangerous incidents? I can tell you one funny story is we're doing a charge down a hill. It's a steep hill, and they hired a bunch of local Indians, and they all showed up that morning drunk. <laughs> and they're all riding bareback, and these guys have got to come off this hill. The chief has this big headdress on, and and he's supposed to come down on this pinto horse, and I don't know why they gave him a pinto horse with a shaved mane, but it was shaved all the way up. There was nothing to hang on to. Huh. And they send him down this hill, and he don't even get, the horse jumps down this first off and he goes off. <laughs> and all I remember is Ben saying, get that shit on now, you double him. <laughs> okay, so I can get this shit on. <laughs> And, and when you get it to, down to the bottom, shoot the bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> shoot the bow and arrow. So you're holding that in one hand. Holding the rain. I, got the, I, got the, I, put, I put a rubber band around the reins because they're split reins. So I could let the reins go for a second so I could shoot the bow and arrow. <laughs> and we're flying down this hill. And I got a couple of my buddies behind me. Mike Adams is one of them. It's right behind me. And then here we go, over and under down this hill, and this, and I shoot the bow and arrow, and I'm trying to find the rain, all of a sudden this horse gets to the water and just stops dead, <laughs> and flings me off of here, and all these guys are riding by me, these drunk, and I'm yelling at Mike, don't let him run me over, Mike! I mean, they're coming to my, <laughs> and they're yelling, play dead, <laughs> play dead my ass! <laughs> well, all these horses are oh. flying by. Wow. Now, who were some of the directors on those How the West Was Won? You know, to be honest with you, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't. Because back then, it, you know, you, you, you come in for one or two things and then you're gone. Mm -hmm. It's not like, like Bruce, he's working with them and they're telling them what to do and how to do this. As a stuntman, you don't, they just say, do your job and then 
beat it, mm -hmm. you know, so. Do you end up saying, I'm a specialist in certain areas? Well, usually the stunt coordinator who hires you know what you can do. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, the general idea. I wouldn't hire a guy to do a high fall that doesn't do high falls. Right. I wouldn't hire a guy to ride a horse, but they all ride horses, as we know, unless I knew he rode a horse, mm -hmm. you know? And you know, you know the guys who ride the horses, mm -hmm. you know, because you, know, you work with them all the time. You worked on Nichols, which was a James Garner series that didn't last very long, but Margot Kidder and uh, Jack Elam, I think, did, did one of those. Garner and Elam were very close. And uh, they, they'd play liar's poker mm -hmm. lunchtime. They'd go around and collect a bunch of dollar bills from people. <laughs> so they sat down and played liar's poker. How do you play liar's poker? I have no idea. You take the dollar, you fold it, and you, and it's all with the, the big numbers, right? The, that group of numbers on a dollar, and that's how you play it. Mm -hmm. I've never played it. Well, I heard Same that. thing with pitch. That's mm -hmm. all Cowboys ever played were pitch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of like keeping my money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I heard that if you played with Jack, you wouldn't have any money left. He well, was yeah. just good. Because he'd good. fool you with his eye, you know. Well, this, is he looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> looking over here. <laughs> you worked on Bonanza that, uh, in an episode that Michael Landon directed. Now, would he get involved in any of the stunt work? We were in a prison. And we were rioting in a prison, is what it was. We did some fights and stuff. Mm -hmm. And my dad was on it. Henry Wills was the stunt coordinator on it. Mm -hmm. So Jerry Wills, who I grew up with, was on it with us. And another kid by the name of Bobby Arrighi. His father used to double for Ben Cartwright mm -hmm. on, on the Bonanza mm -hmm. series. Well, it sure sounds like uh, it's such a close business that the sons and probably the daughters too would come up into the business if they're if they're mom or dad. Well, look at the Eppers. You know, oh, you had sure. Jeannie, Stevie, and all yeah. them were stunt people, and they had Tony Epper and Gary Epper and Andy Epper. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they all grew up in the business. Are many of them your age too? Did you grow yeah, up with oh, a yeah. lot of them? Oh yeah, I worked with them all the time. Uh huh. What is the scariest or the most dangerous stunt you've ever done? One and what sticks in my head was. We were doing a thing called The Last Hard Men, Charlton mm -hmm. Heston. Mm -hmm. And it was myself, Mike Adams, and Tony Brubaker. And we climbed this and this trestle. And I was doubling James Cobra. Mm -hmm. And there's a platform. Joe Canut was the stunt coordinator of it. And we had to roll underneath this train as it comes by. Now, there's only one car what they jacked up so you could roll and your arms flat, you could get underneath. And once the engine went by, you had to count four cars. One, two, three. And as that wheel's coming here, you gotta start rolling to get in so it does. And the scariest part was laying there after you got in and you're listening, you didn't hear anybody scream or anything. And at the end, no, the train went by we all kind of looked up and raised to see if everybody was okay. That, that we are, my heart was pounding just to make sure everybody, I, once I got under there, I was fine. How many people did that? It, just, just three of us, just wow. the three of us still. And then there's another part oh. in that same thing where after they roll underneath the train, you're supposed to reach up and grab this bar and climb aboard the train. Everybody, that's how they got on the train. Well, I'm tied to a cable and I'm, Underneath, they got a thing, a, a pipe, which I wrap my legs around, hang on to. And when I come into the shot, they have plywood laid down on over the trestles. So I lay down and now the train put the cable on my back, pulling me. So I reach up in the camera, grab it, wrap my legs around it and go out of the shot. That's how they tied that together. Well, the train was going too fast. So when I let myself down, I started flopping mm. outside the wheels. And if that cable had broken, it would have killed me. And the time they got the train stopped, I didn't have any clothes on. It just took all my clothes off. And Joe Canut, I could see Joe Canut as I'm unhooked, trying to unhook myself for this train. And I could see Joe and Mike running down, to see if I was all right. <laughs> and I'm standing there, just my wet underwear on. And he looks over at Mike and Mike goes, oh God, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> He said, give him your clothes. Mike couldn't get them clothes off fast enough to give them to me. 
So they slowed the train down and, oh, it, worked, yeah, and it, worked, so. it worked fine. Wow, that is frightening. There's another example of somebody who grew up in the business, Joe and Tap with yes. their dad. And I met Yak when I first came out to town. He was about 90 years old and talked, uh, you know, still yes. way up there, but what a gentleman he was. You know what is kind of sad is, is that the people don't know how, what, how much he really gave to the, new, the stunt people coming, you know, later on. Mm -hmm. like, like what? Well, the whole thing of, you know, he's the one who invented a step to put a step on the side of the horse, do saddle falls. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just little stuff like that. And, and, and the, 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 punch. the punch, you know, he and Duke, uh, yeah. I guess, developed that in those right. Lone Stars. You know, he, he showed John how to, Wayne, how to throw a how punch. How to walk. <laughs> you know, I mean, he is probably one of the greatest stuntmen, you know, that we, we have to look back on. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, there are other guys, you know, like Al Needham and mm -hmm. Mickey Gilbert and those guys and, and Billy Burton, you know, that are great stuntmen, but he was, he, he was pioneered everything. For sure. I was at a dinner, you probably were there too. I was with your mom and dad uh, for a tribute and dinner for Yak. Pat Buttram was a master of ceremonies and of course was hysterical, right. but Yak was there and all these stuntmen, and it was, I was still new to town. They were all get, getting drunk and getting wild. It was a big dance floor, and they started to do standing flips. <laughs> and we're just watching this, and they'd land on their head because they were so <laughs> drunk. <laughs> you, you weren't there for no, this? No, oh, thank God. It was God. a great dinner. It was a great dinner. I'm sure it was. <laughs> that, that chicken and piece of meat, yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> but it was just so much love for Yak that night. It was, uh, it was wonderful. Got, we got all the cowboys here tonight, haven't we? Uh, if there's an Indian raid out there, there'd be nobody to save us except Hugh O'Brien and George Montgomery. I haven't seen so many smiling, happy faces on cowboys since Mary Beth Hughes came into town. No, she was a great little actress. A lot of fun on location. Whether she's in the picture or not, I not Yak, I got a toast to make to you. Doctor said I could have one drink a day. This little baby is for July 14th, 1997. But as you know, the Autry and I found out you can get just as drunk on water as you can on land. here from Autry, because Yak taught him to ride, uh, taught him to mount a horse. I think he taught him to sing, too. <laughs> but uh, he was doubling at the same time at the two guys that became real great from uh, Republic Mascot and Lone Star, John Wayne and Gene Autry at the same time over there. And uh, really did a great job. I, uh, there's a lot of great stuntmen, a lot of great stars here. You know, I see Bobby Fuller. I mean, wonderful. Hadn't made a picture in... <laughs> picture in 15 years. Still shaves his legs every day. <laughs> Keep ready. Bobby Blake, Yak used to double him as Little Beaver on his knees. And uh, 
Mahoney, all the great guys here. I, I think I'm the only sidekick left. I, I'll tell you, it's a, well, it's a, it's a sad thing. I don't know how you leading men, you know, Bob Steele, Autry Rogers, Lone Ranger, Yak, all of them, and uh, Charlie Sterrett, but old Gabby and Smiley and Andy and Chill and Edgar Buchanan and Slim Pickens and Tonto and Fuzzy Knight, Al St. John, they're all gone. Just, uh, I guess I'm going to have to do my drinking alone. From now on. <laughs> First time I uh, met Autry, <clears throat> Yak had arranged for me to see him because uh, there's going to, he needed a new sidekick. Smiley had gone with somebody else. And he'd set up an appointment for me to see Gene down at the Brown Derby in the afternoon. So I come running in. I went over to the bartender. I said, where can I find Gene Autry? He said, you're standing on him. <laughs> so, we, we got along all right from then on. Like all Western pictures, you know, you get out there on location and it's lonesome. You got nothing to do. We didn't like to drink. It's just, just something to do when we were drunk, you know. And, uh, and you'd call home and uh, I know a guy, actor called home, he had a Mexican maid. And he called home, and the Mex this Mexican maid answered the phone. He said, put my wife on the phone. He, she said, the senora is in bedroom, in bed. He said, get her out of bed, bring her to the phone. No, no, he said, she's in bed with a man. He said, what? She repeated it. He said, you've got to kill them. You've got to shoot them both. She said, no, no. He said. I'll give you $20,000 when I get home from a location. Now go into my uh, den, look in the top drawer of the, of the desk, there's a gun there. You shoot them both. I'll give you $20,000. She said, see. So then there's a long pause. She finally comes back to the phone and said, I did. I shot them both. And I threw the gun in the pool. He said, pool, is this one, three, four, six? <laughs> you doubled your dad in The Gray Fox. Years ago, he had a rough cut of the movie. Uh -huh. And it was on three-quarter inch. I must have been the only guy he knew with a three-quarter inch. And so, so we had a dinner party, and Dick and Maggie came, and I invited Dobie and Marilyn Carey, too. And then we showed the three-quarter inch, and it wasn't scored yet. It was really long, I remember. But at the very end, there's this part, and your dad goes, this is my son, my son. And you're going down, sliding down a hill or something. Right, right like off that. the rocks, jumping off. That didn't make it into the movie, which no. is too bad. No. But They said it would have killed him. <laughs> so they took it out. But I did some horseback riding with him alongside the train mm -hmm. when that stuff, I did some of that for him. And you know, he was such a great horseman. And for him to let me do something like that, he must have thought I, you know, kind of make him look kind of good, I guess. <laughs> well, he looked good in that part when he's on his horse on the railroad track right. and the train comes and the horse is getting a little skittish. Yep. That was like, that's my man, that's Dick. Yeah. He's hanging no, he's in there. Hanging in there. What a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for him. And he was so perfect. He, he really was. I mean, in the last couple of shows he did do, you know, like the straight story. Mm -hmm. It was perfect for him, you know, so that was good for him. Diamond, thanks for joining us. This has been so much fun for me to hear these stories, and I, I could keep listening and listening, but I, I've got a cold beer waiting for you that I'm going to oh, crack open for you. But thank you. Thank you for no, sharing. No, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much.